the Harborside Tour. That's right, Harborside Health Center uh, had uh, the best host that we could hope for on our tour, Steve D'Angelo. Also, a special guest appearance by Nurse Heather, and we discover in real time that uh, Nurse Heather and Steve D'Angelo, well, they've got the same hairstyle. So we are, uh, see now here's, this is a perfect way to start. We're outside of uh, Harborside with Steve D'Angelo and here's Nurse Heather. The Braids Party. Hi, how's it going? I just mentioned to Steve that you guys have uh, the same hairstyle. Yes, yes, yes. We've been we've been braiding around for a while. Right. <laughs> We're gonna have a braid off later on today. Stay tuned. All right, all right we'll check it. We'll check you later on that. That's perfect. All right. So here's outside, and uh, you yeah, know. Yeah. So I always start my tours uh, at Harborside and the outside. Uh, you know, uh, in my view, the reason that the voters of California approved Prop 215 was to take patients and communities out of the path of danger, mm -hmm. and so safety is always the number one priority at Harborside. And uh, here in the parking lot, you can see that's evident in a number of ways. We always have at least three safety personnel in the parking lot, two non-uniformed, one uniformed. Uh, we have a uh, 36 camera surveillance system. You can see some of those cameras on the wall behind us. Mm -hmm. Very powerful cameras. We can uh, look a quarter mile down the road and see what's going on in somebody's car if we wanted to. A license plate. Uh, very, very secure. But when you come into Harborside, it, it, you know, you don't see any bulletproof glass or barbed wire or razor wire or armed guards. It's very open and it's very welcoming because we handle our safety with a lot of technology. So in addition to, to the uh, surveillance system, we have biometric locks, we have perimeter alarms, we have heat sensors uh, and, and full staffing. So we make sure that there's a lot of eyes uh, always available on everything that's going on. Yeah, just uh, steps away, there's a bunch of people in there. Oh yeah, there's plenty of people in there. There usually is, <laughs> fortunately for us. Oh, I mean, on the you know uh, harbor side side as well as there are plenty of patients. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> lots of patients. Shall we? Yes, let's head on in. Uh, so uh, we'll walk up. Uh, you guys need to so we the other yeah. Way. So I got to show you a couple of things here. And I, I of course checked in with my license, and they asked me if I was. Uh, First timer or not? Yep, yep, yep. We always uh, uh, make sure that we know uh, what the patient status is before people go in. So we're underneath a little awning here. Uh, we just set this awning up uh, to make sure that there's shade, uh, that if it's raining, people have a chance to show their ID and get in without uh, being exposed to the inclement weather. Over to my left, you see uh, what we call a, a peace station, but uh, it's a refurbished thing. We used to have them, these things called phone booths. Probably a lot of the younger <laughs> listeners don't no remember idea. those yeah. things, but, but they are these quaint old little structures that used to be found on almost every American corner. <laughs> That's it. So the peace station, Our it's important. Peace station, important. Uh, our whole facility is ADA accessible. We just passed the ADA parking lots. And, uh, and then over here on the other side of the stairs is our lift. And just to make sure everybody can get in. Well, hey, AJ, how you doing? All right, we're making our way through security right now. Yes, we do. So uh, three kinds of patients will come through that front door that we came through. New patients, returning patients, and patients who are bringing us medicine to distribute to the rest of the patients. Uh, in all cases, they come through the metal detector that you see here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another one of the ways that we keep Harborside safe. Lots of guns in Oakland, no guns in Harborside. <laughs> there we go. So our new patients, uh, we welcome into our orientation room. Mm -hmm. Which is right by the front door. Right by the front door, just off the front door. And uh, we have a little room here with a couple of uh, computer terminals and uh, uh, some of my amazing staff. And what we do in this room is verify the medical cannabis status of patients, which is a two-step process because we also contact the Medical Board of California, make sure the doctor is in good standing. And then we just explain how the dispensary operates to, to our patients, our first-time patients, and then give them a tour kind of like the one that we're having right now. Indeed, and I'm noticing some uh, artwork on the wall, specifically the one on top there. Right, so we have a framed check, one of the many checks that we write to the city of Oakland. This one's from September of 2011. It's for $360,483.33. It's just a fraction of the taxes we've paid over the years. Uh, since our opening, we've contributed a north of $30 million in combined state, local, and federal taxes. So it's just the $30 million, though? 
Just 30 million, yeah, 30 million dollars in taxes, 150 good, well-paying jobs, a, a reduction of crime in the neighborhood, a few things. Yeah, just the little things here. All right, things. fair enough. So here we are now uh, good as far as orientation is concerned, right? We are. And so if we were returning patients, we would step across this reception hall here mm -hmm. and we would check in at reception. Now, on the way over here, we probably noticed the professional furnishings, the fresh flowers, the open windows, the greenery, the framed awards. Uh, we wanted to create an environment where anybody could feel comfortable. We didn't want people to feel like they had to be a skate punk or a Rastafarian uh, in order to be comfortable at Harborside. We wanted anybody to be able to walk in here and have it be a, feel like a legitimate mainstream retail experience. Mm -hmm. Which it does. It's, uh, it, this might as well be a clothing store. Yeah, we uh, folks often compare it to a bank or to a spa. Um, uh, you know, we like to think of it as the model for cannabis dispensaries. Indeed. So uh, over here at the end of our reception counter, uh, what you see a, a book here, a loose leaf binder, and this book uh, describes a lot of the other services that we provide. Chief among them is our holistic healing clinic, uh, which we'll visit in a little bit. Hopefully it's not in use, um, and, uh, and I'll show you. It's, we offer acupuncture, chiropractic, therapeutic yoga, herbal therapy. Uh, and about 10 other different holistic healing techniques completely free of charge. Um, and, uh, and then uh, we also distribute a lot of other educational material to our patients here. Um, on the wall, you can see a, a whole bunch of awards. Uh, some of them are from industry sources for being a good dispensary and some from advocacy organizations. Uh, but the ones that we're really most proud of are the ones that come from our community organizations. So each one of those red plates you see on the wall uh, commemorates the fact that we gathered a larger amount of food for the Alameda County Food Drive than any other organization in the county. It was northward of, uh, uh, I believe, four tons last year. And that, that's any other organization in the county that is not cannabis specific? That's correct, yes. Any, any. And we also just outraised the uh, can team cannabis, um, just outraised uh, at the recent uh, Pride Walk and uh, uh, AIDS Walk in uh, San Francisco, we outraised Chevron and every <laughs> single tech company. There you go. Um, also here you can see our official commendation from the County of Alameda, uh, recognizing Harborside for uh, providing the community with uh, medicine and our community service. So uh, this is, you can see, signed by every supervisor here in the County of Alameda. Mm -hmm. Uh, across the, uh, the other corner of our reception hall, you see the Patient Activist Resource Center. Uh, we set this uh, area up to encourage and train patients to become activists, to stand up for their rights and the rights of other medical cannabis patients. And so we have a couple of loose leaf binders here. They basically give patients instructions on how to do activist work. And at the end of every hour that they spend doing activist work, we reward them with a free gram of medicine. We also have a care package program for low-income patients, mm -hmm. and there's a means test for that program. So between the Patient Activist Resource Center and the care package program, no patient ever comes to Harborside in need of cannabis medicine and leaves because they don't have enough money. There's always a way for them to get the medicine that they need. We'll find a way. Mm -hmm. right. we always find a way. On the wall, you see some uh, posters uh, talking about a couple of our campaigns. One is a campaign to reform the federal tax code. It's 280E right That's there. It's 280 right <laughs> there. Uh, and uh, we've had a few struggles there, so uh, we continue to struggle on that front. To say the least. Just to say the least. And then uh, to the left of that, you'd see a couple of posters for our Sun Grown uh, campaign. We're big promoters of Sun Grown cannabis. Of course, California has the best Sun Grown cannabis in the world. We have the ideal microclimates for, for growing it. Uh, and the carbon footprint of lamp-grown cannabis is really horrendous. It, you can drive 23 miles down the highway in the average American car on the same amount of energy it takes to grow one joint indoors under lamps. So uh, we publicize that kind of information and make sure that our, our patients have plenty of sun-grown options. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So then, now we could go right around here, right? right? But we're not. Oh, okay. okay. This is what everybody wants to see in the beginning. That's the, sure. that's the medicine, okay? <laughs> Come on this way. I'll show we're you. We're going to go really through cool the back, stuff. right? I'm going to show you how the machine works. All right. So, through this door here, now we're going to go from the public part of the facility to the private part. Whenever you do that, you go through a biometric lock, 
It only opens with an authorized fingerprint. Mm -hmm. With a few clicks of the mouse, uh, I can determine who went through this door, what day, what time. And of course, I have pictures of everything that happens in here. I'm not going to betray my age by saying, smile, you're on camera, camera. I guess I just did do <laughs> you that. You did, though, I? yeah. yeah. Okay, so. uh, uh, Alan Funt's not around, though. Alan Funt's <laughs> not around. Uh, there you go. Um, so uh, we are now in a waiting room, and uh, we provide this waiting room for patients who are bringing us medicine to distribute to other patients. We don't want them sitting out in the main lobby where somebody could spot them, possibly follow them, mm -hmm. possibly rob them. So we provide this waiting room. Uh, it uh, also doubles up as a classroom for some of our larger classes. So we have grow your own medicine classes here that happen all day long on Sundays, some of our larger therapeutic yoga classes. We also have support groups for veterans, for parents who have severely ill children who are medicating with cannabis, uh, for seniors, uh, for women. And so our support groups will uh, also meet here uh, for people who have special, special needs uh, relating to cannabis. Fantastic. Any uh, comment on the artwork? Well, you know, I, we always try to bring a lot of color and a lot of spirit into what we do. We believe that one of the ways that cannabis works is by activating the mind, body, soul nexus in the healing process. And so uh, you come through Harborside, you'll see lots of very colorful uh, deities from a whole variety of different spiritual traditions. Uh, and that's just our attempt to call a little bit of spirit into what we're doing. Fantastic. You got to have faith. Got to have faith. Uh, here, uh, one of our favorite things uh, are th is the gifts that our patients uh, make for us. And we get these amazing, beautiful, handmade gifts. Uh, what we're looking at right now is a peace sign fashioned out of cannabis stalks. And uh, the one that I have, the stalk I have my hand around is, is so fat that I, I can only just barely about get my hand halfway around it. Uh, and uh, it's adorned with ribbons and flowers. And, uh, and engravings, and it, it, uh, it, they are just amongst our very most precious gifts that we've ever received. There, it's beautiful. Another biometric lock now, because we're going to get a little bit deeper into the facility. Okay. And this just it just looks like an office, but then there's some other stuff that goes with that, isn't right. there? Well, you know, most offices don't have a triple beam balance sitting on the counter, much less two of them. Uh, and a uh, few of them have uh, lighted magnifying glasses. Uh, right. And almost none of them would have the portable microscopes uh, that we have here. <laughs> so this is our intake department, our purchasing department, and what we do here is just evaluate the cannabis that's brought to us to make sure it's high quality and that it's completely safe. That's a three-step quality control process. The first is just looking at the cannabis really carefully. Uh, we can use the microscope, we can use the magnifying glass. In some cases, we use a digital microscope to really zoom in on it. Mm -hmm. And we're just looking to make sure that the cannabis has been grown to maturity, that it's free of any obvious visible contaminants, and which can range anywhere from leaves to animal hairs to insects, insect eggs, or insect feces. Uh, so uh, we take a very careful look at it uh, and screen out anything that doesn't meet our standards. Um, that gets rid of about 90% of the medicine that's presented to us. Mm -hmm. um, the 10% that we do keep, we then um, uh, put into this machine here, which is called a Quanican. And the Quanican was developed by Steep Hill Laboratory, which we helped found. And it's a remote cannabinoid analyzer. Uh, so you can put a terminal in any place anywhere in the world that has internet access. Uh, it's equipped with an optical reader. You uh, put a sample of ca cannabis on top of that optical reader activate the device and it sends a image of that cannabis to a database that has hundreds of thousands of other test results in it and returns you an accurate cannabinoid profile in less than two minutes. Also gives us a moisture content and uh, in its new phase will be able to give us terpene readings. Did I hear you right that only 10% gets to that step? Yeah, uh, now that doesn't, uh, we, we, we accept about 10% of the cannabis that's, uh, that's presented to us. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that the other 90% is unsafe. It could just mean that we have a lot of that strain already, mm -hmm. uh, so we don't need any, or perhaps it wasn't quite as well grown as what we're getting from somebody else. Um, but uh, we are very particular about the cannabis we accept here. And we can be. We're in the epicenter of cannabis cultivation in the entire world, so there's no reason not to be picky. Indeed, and uh, we are also at Harborside, so that also means something. Thanks. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, meaning, what about the, uh, I, I guess it's not a photo, it's more a painting above the door. Yeah, uh, above our door here is a line drawing of Jack Herrer, who's 
probably the only hero I ever had who didn't later on disillusion me. Uh, Jack, um, for those of, who don't know about him, absolutely Google him and read his book, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. Uh, it revealed for the first time the connection between cannabis, uh, industrial hemp, um, psychoactive cannabis, and medical cannabis. And uh, he was, a, um, in my view, the most important cannabis activist in history. Okay. To say, again, to say the least. All right. So we're, we're making our way out. We're making our way out. Before we go out, I'll show you our air scrubber here. You can hear that coming on. Right. Anybody who's been in a grow room knows what that sound is. It's the sound of a carbon filter, uh, which is attached to an exhaust fan. And uh, it will clean all of the odor out of air before it's exhausted into our neighborhood. We don't want any of our neighbors to get too excited or offended <laughs> when they smell the odor of cannabis. Either way they go, we don't want them to. Either way, <laughs> we'd like them to, to have a more modulated experience with the plant. Indeed. Okay, so... There's a couple different ways we could go here. Well, we're, we're just going to go down this hallway because on the left-hand side of the hallway is offices. So mm -hmm. admin offices, the same kind of offices you have in any business. So we have a finance office. We have an admin office. We have a general manager's office. And they look like every other office except there's cooler art on the wall and the people <laughs> in there are nicer and there's a little bit of a happier vibe. <laughs> that is uh, extremely well said. So we're making our way, uh, what, 15 paces down the hall? To, ah, yeah. oh, look at this. And so now we are in what we call uh, our nursery, or probably more properly said, a, cl a clone stocking room. Uh, one of the things Harbor Sites put a lot of emphasis on is having extremely high quality genetics, both uh, in seeds and in, in cuttings and clones. We typically have uh, three or four hundred different seed varieties that are available, up to 50 or 60 clone varieties that are available. As far as I know, the largest. Uh, collection of high quality cannabis genetics in North America. And uh, at planting season, you can see huge lines uh, developing um, when people are coming in to buy clones. We service a lot of the outdoor growers in, in Northern California. And, you know, the, what we've done with this program is, is really to search out strains of cannabis that have really unique cannabinoid profiles, mm -hmm. uh, often stuff that's overlooked by the larger commercial market, and then encourage uh, growers to, to grow out these really unique uh, cannabinoid profiles. We pioneered the development of CBD-rich medicine back in 2011. Mm -hmm. So that uh, brings up a, a perfect question. Uh, where are you now if that's where you were in 2011 and, you know, kind of fostering that among the grower community? Where are you now with CBD research? Well, you know, I think that, uh, that CBD is, is, is right, right now, today, you can come into Harborside and you will find uh, a number of different uh, CBD-rich flower varieties and manufactured products. So the program that we started five or six years ago is, is really, really successful. What we wanted to do is make sure there was plenty of CBD-rich medicine on the shelves. Mm -hmm. uh, now what we're beginning to do is start looking at some of the other really interesting cannabinoids that are out there. And we're hoping to be able to feature some CBG, some CBV, uh, rich strains okay. and uh, and start exploring some of the many other cannabinoids that are there and, and that uh, specifically for uh, specific use type of thing yeah exactly uh, there's you know there are somewhere between 65 and 400 individual unique chemical compounds in the cannabis plant cannabinoids each one of them has its own unique effect on the human body and the human mind and in combinations they have a unique effect so you know when you calculate the number of variables that there are there uh, you find that there's just a, an almost uh, infinite variety of different strains and different formulations of cannabis that can be prepared that will have different beneficial effects so uh, CBD research is a journey not a destination Cannabinoid research is definitely a journey, not a destination. Uh, you know, I, I, I believe that 20 years from now, uh, you'll take a look around and the, the rediscovery of medical cannabis is going to rank as the most important medical development since the discovery of germ theory. Which is a big deal. That's a very big deal. Yeah, yeah it's a very big deal, <laughs> particularly since... Uh, the United States government knew about the therapeutic applications of cannabis for a long time, including its cancer-fighting applications since 1974, yeah. and deliberately sat on the information. Only for the past 41 years, but we're getting there. 
we're getting there. All right. So we're going to make our way out of the nursery, keep going down this hall that we were traversing down, right? Yes, we're going to traverse down the hall a little while here. Note that we're going through lots of biometric locks. There's lots of cameras here, um, plenty of safety and security. Hello, everybody. So we are in the Harborside processing room. This is where our large bulk pro uh, packages of product got broken down into our individual retail packages. There's a number of stainless steel tables in the room and uh, some more of my amazing staff at those tables. You'll see uh, them wearing hand protection and hair protection, people who are actually working with the medicine itself. The stainless steel, the tile floors, the hand sanitizer on the wall behind me, the hair protection, hand protection, all just basic steps that we take to make sure that the cannabis remains in good shape while it's in our hands. You can see some incredible things in this room here. Let me show you one of them. What? Well, this is a little bit on the empty side right now, but you can see that at one time it held a great deal of cannabis extract. Where did that go? Is that in, probably in there now? So There's a, another is, bowl over this there. This is what it comes in, yeah. in a great big old jar like this. It looks like a I don't know, jam or honey or something. <laughs> Beautiful and lovely. And then once we get done processing it, you can see there's these uh, little uh, clear jars uh, that have this beautiful amber colored glistening sparkling liquid in them uh, tucked into our very attractive Harborside pouches. Mm -hmm. Barcoded and ready for sale. There you go. One side with the uh, Harborside logo, the other side clear. Correct. Okay. Thank you guys and gals. All right. I would imagine we're going here. We're, we're, we're going through a thoroughfare here. This is the this is a, a room that goes to another room most of the time. Okay, that tends to happen, Steve. <laughs> it does. Yeah. This one has three doors going into it, so it happens a lot. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is our fulfillment center for our delivery and web online web ordering. So, patients can from anywhere in the Greater Bay Area can go online, they can place an order, they can call us up on the phone, and we'll deliver that order free of charge uh, anywhere in the Greater Bay Area. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then patients can also place an order online for web pickup. We have a special line for folks to come in, which is much shorter than our other lines. And how does web pickup work? You know, uh, if, is it as simple as it would be at any other retailer? Yeah, you know, basically you just go online, you browse our menu, you select your purchases, uh, you uh, identify yourself, mm -hmm. uh, and then when you come in, that package will be waiting for you. It's pre-prepared. All you have to do is go up to the cashier. We ring you up, and you're in and out in three or four minutes. But I am identifying myself online uh, when I'm making the purchase. You are identifying yourself online when you make the purchase. We, we have sec secure ways of doing that, mm -hmm. but yes, it does involve that leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right. And uh, behind me here, we've got tons of freezers that have all sorts of different uh, edible cannabis products in them. There's a uh, chocolate hemp milk that I'm looking at right now. Mm -hmm a uh, jar of our Jaden juice, which is specifically developed for children with uh, intractable epilepsy. We have some of the new interesting brands that are beginning to come out in the medical cannabis market, or the cannabis market in general. So we have these Corova uh, medical cannabis uh, peanut butter dip. Mm -hmm. There's a few uh, refrigerators here, so yeah. Yes, there's a lot. Uh, well, you know, we, we need to keep the medicine in good shape while it's in our hands. We see upwards of, you know, sometimes a thousand patients a day here, and so a, a fairly vast amount of, of, of product can move. I always want to make sure we have it in stock. Indeed. Well, now we're going to head towards the uh, most secure part of our facility. We're going to go through another biometric lock. You've been through about eight of them now, I think. Yeah, roughly, exactly. This is uh, our cash processing center, uh, made necessary courtesy of the federal government. Uh, <laughs> we would prefer to operate like all other businesses and you know use these things called credit cards and debit cards. Uh, Unfortunately, continuing harassment um, by the federal government has led banks to refuse to do business, not just with Harborside, but almost every cannabis dispensary in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, it creates a huge problem for us. Uh, it also creates a huge uh, public safety danger. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For everybody involved. For everybody. Okay, we're making our way around a corner here. And here is our amazing safety manager, Steve Schulenberger. 
and our surveillance center. You want to run him, run uh, us through that a little bit? We run uh, 32 cameras off of two DVRs, so we're able to record uh, up to 32 cameras at once. They run uh, day and night, 24-7, basically a few run off of motion sensors um, in less sensitive or less traffic areas. Um, but for the most part, recording 24-7, uh, and we store the data for typically up to about a month. Uh, they are pan tilt zoom cameras, so we have the ability uh, to not only uh, see within the building, but we can see everything surrounding the property as well. So primarily for the safety of our patients and our staff, uh, that's what we're here for. Uh, but it also really helps us with chain of custody all the way from the time a vendor comes with the product uh, to the time it actually leaves the door. And we can see both inside, outside, um, every aspect of the building, um, down to the details on a computer screen for a transaction if we needed to. Yeah, you've got all 32 cameras up and you just clicked into uh, one of the external cameras and then zoomed into the license plate of a car, as Steve mentioned, uh, on our way in. So, absolutely, it feels safe from in here. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is how it should be. Exactly. Why we're still here and have had very little of any problems. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it is safe. Yeah. We've been open for almost a decade. We've had three minor incidents, um, only one of which resulted in an arrest, and, uh, and everybody has always been perfectly safe here. Excellent. And that's how we get commendations. Yeah, you know, actually, if you take a look, uh, bef the Oakland tracks the number of crimes by neighborhood. And if you look at the crime incident report maps from before we opened, there were like dozens of crimes in this neighborhood. Now, most months, maybe there's one or two, always at the far end of the neighborhood, far from where we are. Neighborhood wide. All right, so we've got... Uh, we've got these carts uh, on, uh, as we're uh, heading up here towards our vault, uh, you'll see a series of uh, metal wire carts with shelves on them. And then we walk in here to uh, actually quite a fabulous vault. So we're going to go through this sort of bank-like uh, door with levers and combination locks and a biometric lock, and quite heavy. Watch your step on the way up. You've got to step over all that reinforced concrete, which is floor, ceiling, and all walls. And uh, along the left-hand side of this wall, you'll see a series of safes. And these safes are all uh, underwriter, laboratory uh, inspected and rated. Uh, they would take a long, long time for anybody to break into. And uh, our vault is, uh, is really completely secure. So. Any medicine that's not sold during the course of the day comes back in here overnight, and this is where it stays overnight. And just in case people might be tempted to try and break in, uh, they know that they're not going to get anywhere that's worthwhile. There you go. Maybe some artwork from the walls, but not the medicine. No, they wouldn't even get the artwork from the walls because as soon as you break the harborside perimeter, uh, lights, sirens, noise, and guards descend on you in like a matter of seconds. Uh, we had a few kids. One of the, the few incidents we had was a couple of young kids who tossed a rock through our front window. I think they were going for the computer monitor that was on the other side of, of, of the window. I was up here in three minutes because I live right around the corner. I was up here in three minutes, right? <laughs> Pulled up the video, and I saw these two kids who were just hauling butt, terrified, running away from Harborside because there was just so much commotion, alarms and lights when they broke the perimeter. So uh, the word went out pretty quickly. <laughs> I haven't had an attempt like that since then. <laughs> there you go. So not even the artwork. The artwork's safe. Everything's yeah, safe here. Exactly. All right, so we're going back from the vault, uh, you know, through the uh, shelving units. And if, if I'm not mistaken, the Harborside logo itself uh, the, is the leaf uh, not uh, more within the grasp of the hands than it used to be? Is it more within the grasp? Gee, I don't know. Uh, I, I haven't been tracking that. I haven't I, noticed it, but, uh, you know, the, the logo really um, speaks to, you know, some of our central beliefs about cannabis, which is the role that it, 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 it plays in bringing people together. And it's really a, a celebration, intended as a celebration of the diverse culture that we have here in Oakland. There you go. Okay. So we're going back through uh, to where the refrigerators were, and I would imagine we're choosing uh, the third well, door now, out. Now, now right? we're going to go where everybody wants to go as soon as the tar <laughs> store starts, which is our amazing, beautiful dispensary floor, uh, which is uh, has 
stunning bamboo floors and wooden counters, uh, museum quality display cases, uh, art on the walls, uh, beautifully uh, illuminated with natural light. So let's go take a look. Through the door, and out, out into the light. Through the door and out into the light. <laughs> So now we're standing behind the counter, the sales counter at Harborside. Just behind us are cases that have our various different retail packages of medicine. And plenty of it. And plenty of it. And um, uh, on the other side, closer to the counter, we have a whole series of point of sale stations, cashier stations, some smaller refrigerators underneath the counter, and we have a nice healthy line of patients who are lined up and they're talking to our patient consultants here and making selections for their purchases today. I've been here for the better part of an hour and that line has not has has obviously uh, continued to uh, to go uh, to be active but also long. Well, it's not unusual for us to have a dozen or maybe a couple of dozen people in line, but we have 12 sales stations, so nobody stays in that line for very long. Uh, understood. My point more was how many patients do come through here a day on average? Somewhere between 700 and 1,000 patients a day come a day. to Harborside, Oakland, and right now we're up to close to 300 patients a day in our new San Jose location. Unbelievable. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing. Indeed. And I can see as we kind of make our way out of the, uh, b from behind the uh, counter, to the left here is kind of a public nursery almost. Yeah, so this is our clones uh, department here. And uh, we found a long time ago that it was important to have a specially trained staff to interact with growers who are purchasing clones. They really have a whole another series of questions and concerns that most patients don't have. So. We put staff here who's really, really uh, very well versed in cultivation and able to answer all of the growers' questions. Uh, we, uh, at, right now, you, you don't see a line here. Uh, that's because it's August in, instead of a little bit earlier in the year. Uh, but if you came in here around April or May, you would have seen about 30 or 40 people lined up here to, to get their clones. Excellent. There is a nice display uh, case, uh, kind of in the, the middle towards the uh, front side of the, uh, uh, of the uh, dispensary, and then there's also this table here. So yeah, I mean, as you move away from the clones counter, what you see is our, our seed display case. Uh, it, it displays a small selection of the you know, many hundreds of varieties of seeds that we have. There's some computer monitors next to that case, which allow patients to access the full inventory that we have available. Uh, we, to the right of that, we are looking at a, another small altar space. Uh, we don't really have spaces in Harborside where patients can come and hang out and engage in activities. Um, uh, we just don't have that much space available. But we also know that some of our patients might not be able to get out of the house very frequently except to come to Harborside. And we want them to have an opportunity to soak up the environment a little bit, uh, a little bit of our healing vibrations. And so we create this altar which flips out and changes every month or two months. Uh, the last one was an altar that used Native American uh, symbology for calling rain. So it was all about the drought in California. And uh, we honor just about any spiritual tradition, um, uh, but, um, but you know we don't advocate any one single school of thought. So you can bring whatever you want, uh, but we're not giving you any. Or we'll give, well, we'll give you all of them. We'll, we'll, we will give you all the spirit we can round up from whatever source it is, and hopefully it does you a lot of good. Indeed, indeed. All right, so there's this display case in the middle, and then there's what I understand is a new counter space. Yeah, so over here you see um, uh, just a little boutique area where we sell Harborside branded goods, T-shirts. Uh, we have some uh, hats here that we make available, some cannabis-style socks. Uh, some of the best cannabis books that we think are on the marketplace, and just a little display with uh, some of our other products. But over on the other side of the room is really is our most exciting new feature. Which is why Nurse Heather was here and is here. Exactly, and uh, so you know what we're seeing here is, is Harborside's first store-in-store -store experience. And we are featuring a amazing line of new cannabis products called Prana, 
and I'm going to let my friend Tony Tony <clears throat> I'm going to let my friend Tony Verzura tell you a little bit more about the Prana product line. All right. How you doing today, Steve? Doing Thanks great. for that How introduction. I'm going all right. well. Going well. Today's an exciting day because we're just officially getting the uh, capsule line stocked. So the best way and the easiest way to explain it, we've got an ACT NOW program that stands for Advanced Cannabinoid Therapy. We have our own EHR software and standby nurses that has cannabinoid supplements. So we have a full line of inactive and active cannabinoid supplements in capsules, sublinguals, topicals, and transdermals. So it's been an ex amazing experience actually in the last uh, three, four days, kind of getting our feet wet here at Harborside seeing the enormous amount of support that they offer the community. Um, the patients that are coming here are real patients that are in real need of, uh, you know, advanced formulas and, and, and being able to be empowering them. So our other process that we're doing here is giving them as much information and education, empowering the patients to make those choices for themselves. So we kind of have a little bit of both, over-the-counter and one-on-one uh, -on -one patient care. Excellent. It sounds amazing, and I, I can tell that Steve's excited about it. Well, I'm totally excited because, you know, what the Prana line offers is, is much more precisely targeted cannabis formulations than we've ever had available before. And coupled with the Act Now program, what that does is, is allows patients to come into Harborside. They can sit down and talk to a nurse. Uh, a registered nurse about what their specific medical issues are. Uh, the nurse and the patient together explore the information in the database and we actually provide a detailed treatment plan for that patient with specific formulations, specific capsules, specific tinctures to be taken on a certain schedule. And this is uh, fills a deep, deep need in the cannabis industry. Uh, we have done the best we can to guide our patients to the most effective products for their conditions, the Prana and Act Now line will allow us to do that in a much more sophisticated way. And uh, you know that uh, is a, a great way to kind of sum up what, what's happening here. Uh, we've absolutely been through all of the physical space. Uh, is there anything else to fill? Well, there's one thing we missed, which okay. is very cool. So come on down here. <laughs> And uh, we're very proud of our museum quality display cases. Uh, one of the big problems that I had when I came into this industry was that almost every dispensary I saw used the same old beat up thrift store glass counters that, you know, you kind of had to go almost all the way down <laughs> to the ground to look at the bottom shelf. And, you know, <laughs> couldn't even really see it that well then. So, which you actually just demonstrated. I so did thank just you. demonstrate yeah. that, yes. <laughs> one of my pet peeves. I'm still not over it. Yeah, right? obviously, right? <laughs> so we created these these beautiful uh, wood, glass, and metal display cases. They are like the equivalent of something that you'd see in a fine museum. Mm -hmm. uh, in the case that we're looking at now, this is our extract case. So we're looking at a variety of different bubble hash, full melts, um, and, uh, and rosins. Uh, and they're really beautiful. They're in these uh, little uh, clear plastic uh, round um, uh, lenses. And silver dollar sized. Silver them. dollar sized. Mm -hmm. And you just see this incredible range of colors and textures. You see browns, you see reds, you see goldens, you see greens. You see different levels of translucency and transparency. It's almost, it really is like looking in a museum. Yeah. Uh, and then, Gives the profile and everything. And then this case uh, here, uh, you'll see our various different melts, uh, our super melts, our oils. And uh, this one is maybe even more uh, artistic. And there's some just incredible extracts that we're seeing now. Here you see a pure THCA product. Um, uh, incredible uh, to, to me to see something like that. Um, we have uh, live rosin. Uh, so uh, this is a cannabis extract which is made from green buds. And it captures much more of the terpene profile of the cannabis. We're now learning that terpenes are probably at least as important, or maybe more important, to the therapeutic effects of cannabis as cannabinoids are. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited to, uh, to start seeing these very sophisticated extracts coming onto the market with high terpene contents. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, uh, I mean, just a bunch of things that it looks like I want to eat. Yes, so, uh, <laughs> you know, these are, this is our edible collection. All of the edibles that leave Harborside in an opaque package that's not easily opened or attractive to children. 
Uh, so we like to make sure we have an opportunity for patients to actually see what these beautiful products look like. And, uh, and you can see here, uh, we have another beautiful wooden case. It's, it's full with uh, small little uh, uh, Japanese ceramic dishes. And in each dish is a different type of cannabis edible. Uh, we have pretzels. We have uh, beautiful little squares of chocolate with cannabis leaves stamped into them. We have popcorn. Uh, we have some beautiful, colorful cookies that were actually featured this weekend in uh, a front page spread in the food section of the San Francisco Chronicle, an incredible article. <laughs> so we'll have to look that up. Indeed. <laughs> and just more and more product as we go. And then here uh, we're getting into our bud selection here. So you can see uh, some of the flower selections that we have. Not all of them, but some of them. Mm. Fantastic. And then over here, of course, is uh, yet another case. In addition to some of the things we saw in the other cases, you see here uh, Harborside's top shelf uh, cannabis flowers. We have three different types of top shelf. We have a sun-grown top shelf. We have a lamp-grown top shelf. And then we have a reserve top shelf. The reserve top shelf is generally cannabis that's very exotic and that we can only get in small quantities. And it is physically on the top shelf. It is physically on the top shelf. <laughs> and, uh, and then along the other side, uh, we have a variety of different tinctures, uh, topical items, um, and uh, capsules. Excellent. Excellent. And again, the, uh, there are dozens of patients uh, about, as I'm sure folks can hear from just the uh, general kind of conversation happening behind us. You want, the, you want this again? So, you want this? so there is I'll be right back. there is an ATM machine there, of course, and a couple of uh, profiles of uh, of Mr. D'Angelo himself, I guess. Well, the cool thing about these articles, you can see they come from all over the world. So here's an article in German, here's an article in Spanish, and uh, you know we've really uh, been able to present a different perception, a different model of cannabis that's resonated all over the world. I think. Harborside is probably the only globally known dispensary brand that exists in the industry. Uh, absolutely. And uh, now, I think, we have been through uh, all of the physical space we here. We have been through the physical space. Is there a, uh, a final comment, I guess, uh, if for our mental space in terms of Harborside, if we're, doing, if we're finalizing the tour here? Well, uh, uh, you know, we like to talk about the intangible effect uh, that people get when they walk into Harborside. And typically what we hear from people who haven't been in here before is that, wow, you know, I walked in there and it just felt good. It felt like everybody in there was happy and the vibrations were really good. It just, it felt really good to be in there. And that's what we call the intangible harbor side effect. And, and I've got it now. And thank you once again, Steve D'Angelo. My pleasure. The Harbor Side Health Center. Really appreciate Steve D'Angelo's time uh, truly the best uh, person we could hope for on uh, on the tour of Harborside really learned a lot about uh, you know how they do it over there and the fact that they uh, simply will not turn away a patient they'll find a way to find that patient medicine <laughs>